Let's talk about one of my favorite features of a Jira work management, which you do not see inside a Jira software, which kind of breaks my heart a little bit, but I'm excited to talk about it in this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video, and don't forget to check out the links down below so you can find links to all the different ways that you can help support the channel. I got merch store, I got paid courses, I got free courses, and most importantly, I got links to the sponsors that help make these videos possible. All right, let's jump into Jira work management and talk about my favorite feature. This video is sponsored by Appbox. Inside of Jira work management, if you haven't caught on by now, the user interface, while very familiar, it feels like Jira software, it is somewhat different. And over this entire last series of videos, I have shown you some of the key differences, some of the key functionalities of a Jira work management project that make it unique or at least maybe more suitable to you when compared to Jira software. Now, what we're gonna be talking about today is one of my favorite features, which I wish Jira software would have because I know a lot of people like viewing issues in a calendar type of view. And in fact, Jira work management offers you this calendar view, which is also a step up from Trello. So if you're a Trello user, and you don't wanna pay for a calendar feature, Jira work management might be the tool for you because you are gonna get that calendar view functionality inside of Jira work management that Jira software nor Trello offer you for free. So this is of one of those, if I had to kind of make a list as to why I would use a Jira work management project, this calendar view is definitely on the top of my list. So let me show you what it looks like. So inside of Jira work management, you might be familiar with this view already. And most people use the board view, right? Because board is very familiar. It's just the, like the same like in Trello and pretty much any other project management tool. You're gonna have this very simple to use a board view. You also have a list view, which is basically just a list of all the different issues that you have along with all the field data. But today we're gonna be taking a look at the calendar view. Now the calendar view is unique because it gives you a more 50 foot, thousand foot view of where everything is relative to when it's gonna start and when it's gonna be due. So think of this as more like an appointment type of view where you can see very clearly the start date and the due date of any issue. And you can kind of have a holistic view of like, and a good understanding of, okay, a bunch of issues are gonna be due like on the 10th or on the 24th, right? And you can start making plans and you know allocating your resources so that you can be more successful with hitting your targets here. Now, how does this view actually work? Well, there's a couple of ways to interact with this view. And so let me show you around. First, in the list view, we're gonna go back a little bit, right? So if you go to like the list view, or literally when you hit the create button, it doesn't matter where, right? But the moment that you are interacting with the tool here, you are able to set a start date. And so let's just put the 20th and you're able to set a due date. So let's just say the 24th. And so when I create this one, right, I'm gonna call it my Thanksgiving task and I hit create. At this moment in time, when I go to my calendar view, that task is gonna be visible in here. So the moment I hit create, it'll show up. If I'm in the list view and I'm looking at an existing issue, I can open up pretty much anything here and then I can go and set my due date. So let's just do this one from last week and a start date. And you can see that this is a two day task. And the moment we click out of here, we can go back into our calendar view and we're gonna now see that this we're late. Notice that this is red. It's got a little red indicator here that this is a task that should have been done, but isn't done already. And Jared Work Management is doing a pretty good job of telling us, hey, uh, you're a little you're a little past this deadline here. And so it's gonna be nice red, different color to attract your eyes there. So that's one of the first two ways of doing it. But that's not the only way to do this, right? So you can actually click into any of these dates and type in uh, need to record awesome video, click enter. And once that's done, you're kind of there, but we can also now start expanding it out. And so we can click out and go out, 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 and I can actually make it go like this. And so now I made it like a three week task. So the interface is a little bit sluggish in my opinion, but you kind of get the effect, right? So you can actually from within the calendar view, kind of just start drag and dropping, select a couple of dates, let go. This is something that, uh, I don't know, buy food for Thanksgiving. If you prepare a couple of weeks before, that would have been that. And you can see that that task is created. Now, when you create in this view, of course you're gonna be able to see it like in the list view. So all these things that I just made are showing up over here. 
they have their due date, they have their start date. I don't know that I have the start date visible here, I don't, but you would be able to see the start and the due date in the list view. And obviously when I click into it, you're gonna be able to see that the start date and the due date are set inside of the issue. So that's kind of how you add things into it. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well-maintained, optimized, and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool, Optimizer for Jira, to audit and configure, clean up, and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip-top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. Now, if you wanted to move things around, it's also super easy. All you gotta do is like hold to a task, maybe the thing here, DCP 16, got delayed a week. So it's actually due uh, next week. So we can just simply grab the whole item and move it down. And now it's not late, now it's okay. And the same thing over here, maybe this task needs to be a couple days long so you can shrink it and we can move it out over here. And let's, let's just say we're not the biggest preppers and we're actually gonna buy our Thanksgiving food this week. So as you can see, we can just simply move things around. If you wanna just do a one day thing, you can just again, click into that one cell, um, cl click a couple cells to make a two day thing. And it's really, really easy to interact with the system here. And most importantly, it gives you that high level overview so you can see how your team is performing. Now let's take a look at a couple of other things that are available to you. So obviously you can move around different months here so you can see what was last month, what's happening this month. You can go into the feature and look into next month. And so you can be pretty aggressive with finding out the dates that are interesting to you. You can always click back to today to bring you back to today's date. You can share this with other folks. So you can share the calendar with other people or you can share it in Slack. And then you can filter, right? So maybe you wanna see items that belong to a specific assignee, or maybe you wanna see items that are in a specific date range, or you just wanna see items that are due this week, then you can just click on these items and it's gonna filter everything else out because sometimes this view can become a little bit overwhelming with all the different moving pieces that your team is working on. But if you wanna just you know fine tune and maybe hone in on an individual or on a specific date, you can do that and just click on these super quick filters here. You can clear them out and it's gonna give you the view that you need to get in order to get just the data that you wanna see. You can do it by priority. You can do it by labels, by issue type, by the reporter, statuses, anything updated. And so all the way here at the bottom, you even have custom fields so you can expand those and see what custom fields are in this particular project. So you can go by my favorite chocolate, which is for this particular example. So as you can see here, a lot to do there. And then there's even a plus a more button here where you can hide done items. So maybe you don't wanna see items that are already completed, which might be a good idea. Maybe you don't wanna you know, clutter with all the things that are done. You just wanna see the outstanding tasks where you can slide this on or off. You can also change your start week. So as you can see, we're starting the week on a Sunday. You can change that to be a Monday or a Saturday, depending on what works for you and your team. And then we have software release dates, which is a new beta feature coming out that allows us to work closer with our software projects. So maybe we're using Jira Work Management to track you know, lesser important tasks that are not related to the software team directly, but might have some effect on the software team where you can link up and, and kind of align your dates with the releases that the software team is working around. So you make sure that all your tasks in here have some visibility into the release and the roadmap that the software teams have built out. So kind of a cool stuff there. And yeah, that's kind of the simple view of how this works. So one of the last things that, that I wanna show you is that when you do take these tasks and you assign it to an individual, like this one's assigned to me, then down here, you will see the assignee of these individual tasks. So again, I'm a team of one, so it doesn't have the same effect, but let's go give one to Bob over here. When we close that out, we're gonna see that Bob in a second or two, there's gonna be a little B that's gonna be created as it is here. And now we can also see at a high level who's assigned what. So what this allows you to do is you it helps you understand Oh my gosh, Bob's got like 20 tasks that are all due next week. Hmm, might wanna follow with Bob and make sure that he's on track to get those done. Or take things off the plate and you know move or reshuffle, do something strategic at that point. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let me take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. How do you ensure all of your documents and confluence go through the right processes or reach the right stakeholders before they're finished? After all, every document is different and you may need a slightly different process for each one. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Introducing Workflows for Confluence. It's an all-in-one document management tool that allows you to build powerful document workflows with custom page statuses, approvals, unique document versioning, 
and integrated publishing controls. Check out the link in the description down below to get started. Now back to the video. But anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, it's a very quick one on how to use the calendar feature, which again, one of my favorite features. I wish Jira Software had this. I wish Trello had it for free. This is definitely one of the reasons why we use Jira Work Management because from a homeschooling perspective, when we're tracking tasks, we wanna be able to have a good view of when these tasks are done because this calendar view feels very natural and it gives us the most important information that we need front and center. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button as well. And then finally, don't forget to check out the links down below because if you've ever wondered, hmm, such a great channel, how can I support the channel? Well, there's links for the free stuff, the paid stuff, check them all out. It's all there for you. Help support the channel. Keep the channel alive. And I'll see you in the next one. So fight and